Hey. <laughs> yeah. Hey. That is episode 72 of Alex and Jim. And I'm not saying hey because of that. I love this show. Oh, that's the good news. Uh, I'm saying hey about everything else in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, by the time you see this, it'll, all the things will be a week ago. Yeah, so there will be a week's worth of new things. New, new horrors we that we don't even know about yet. Yeah. Oh my God, we should have doubled up on shootings. <laughs> uh, That'll probably be the case. So here's my latest uh, gun joke. Here's my latest gun joke. You ready? I'm ready. I like it so much I didn't put it on Twitter because I want to massage it and do it in the act. And it can uh, figure, because it can go into a whole chunk I have, but uh, uh, a statistic came out that the United States has over half of all the guns in the world. Wow. The United States has over half of the guns. And I think like you, the first thing I thought is, what's the rest of the world doing with all of our other guns? Yeah. <laughs> We got to go get those guns. God. Half, half won't do. Yeah. This, so this is a joke I've done in my act for a while. I'll tell you this joke. And the joke is uh, gun violence can be sad, but it also can be funny. The funniest version of gun violence is Google dog accidentally shoots owner. Yeah. And it's not one story. It's multiple stories of dog shooting guns. And uh, and then the, the tag of that joke is that, uh, you know, that was probably a bad boy. And the only way to stop a bad boy with a gun is a good boy with a gun. <laughs> now, coda to that joke. I have a friend named Jim Coughlin. Jim Coughlin's a very funny comic, but he's also really OCD. He likes to look stuff up. Oh, yeah, you talked about Jim. Yeah. And when I did that joke originally, he, of course, Googled it. And he said to me, hey, you're right. It isn't just one story. Well, I got a text from him this week, and he goes, hey, guess what? Another <laughs> dog shot a guy. Yeah. Like, I, but I saw that this week, and I was uh, going to bring it up. Every uh, That joke will never, that'll never be dated. That Hell joke. Yeah. Keep on doing them. Here, can I pitch you a, an alt punchline or an additional coda? Yeah. Oh, he thinks he's a person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's really good. I thought of another one this week to add to it. And Great. This, the other one I thought was, because my friend Amori was saying, how did that even happen? And I said, well, apparently the dog stepped on the rifle, which was on the ground, and it happened to pull the trigger. And and Amori was like, yeah, but what are the odds that that would happen? And it occurred to me that it probably is really unlikely that that would happen. In fact, it's probably one in a million that that would happen. But based on the amount of dogs we have in this country and the amount of guns, one in a million means eventually we're all going to get shot by dogs. Every single one of us will be shot by a dog. It's coming. You just hope it's soon and it's a, a, a you get grazed. Yeah. You That's know, the, I, you don't hear about all the stories where the dog stepped on the gun and missed. Yeah. It's be tens of thousands. Yeah, absolutely. And what are the statistics too? You think you're safer with a gun, but Every single time somebody gets shot by a dog with a gun, it's always a dog they knew. Yeah. <laughs> Usually like a rich dog with a boat. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it was really interesting that uh, that dog just took out that insurance policy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it never ends. The, the shootings and the things. Dogs. And now the videos, too, the videos of the fake videos of people with the COVID shakes from the vaccine. Oh, they're very funny. They've never seen an actual seizure. Yeah, it's I remember there was a critique of one of them by an actor 
who said, I think it's the same thing when you're trying to pretend to be drunk. What yeah. you really do is try to pretend to be sober. Right, because that's what you do when you're really drunk. That's what you do when you're drunk. So the same with the seizures. Right. And, and why is this part of you not shaking? And why is that nurse so negligent to let you wander around the room? Or why are you sitting at home drinking a Heineken? Right, a Heineken. Lady. Oh, just the Heineken hand. And yeah. then no problem turning off the video. <laughs> Just the Heineken hand. That's a, that's what they call that, by the way. That side effect is called the Heineken hand. Heineken hand. You know, um, the desperation to be some version of famous uh, in this country is so poisonous. Yeah. Like, oh, maybe, you know, my video will get shared <laughs> if I do Heineken hand. I guess that's easier than learning how to sing or something. Yeah. And it did, right? They're famous, kind of. Passed around a lot. I don't know her name, but I'll bet like there's a corner of the internet that knows her name very well. And she can set up a GoFundMe and grift a bunch of people. Yeah. Meanwhile, people were mean. I your ideas. <laughs> Meanwhile, people were mean to Rebecca Black. No, I missed this entirely. Oh, well, it's an oldie. When she did her Friday song? Yeah. What I'm saying is when, when she put out her video, which was a teenager trying to sing a song, she yeah. got a few death threats. <laughs> yeah. Great. Heineken hand lady will probably get money. Yeah. Anyway, it's a great country. It's a great country so far. Well, it's not yet. Yeah, that's true. It could just be a lull in the greatness yeah, it does really, I, I said the joke before, but it's really neat to live through that whole end of Rome experience. It's wild, right? Somebody tweeted something about how it's great living in the Middle Ages. It's like, I can't afford eggs or bread. <laughs> trying not to get the plague. Right. And, uh, yeah, my landlord's a fucking bastard. <laughs> By the way, the eggs don't have to be shorted. That's the cool part, too. There could actually be plenty on the shelf. All that would have to happen is mm -hmm. give the farmers a little more money because resources are tight right now. So then they can afford to produce them and get them to us. Yeah, yeah. I don't even, I didn't, I didn't know what they cost before. Yeah. And I don't really know what they cost now. We don't go for a ton of eggs here at the house. Uh, I'm sure there are people who do, people with big old families. I'm uh -oh. trying to gauge how much of a hardship it really is. I don't know. But I have the same problem with gas prices because I don't have a car. Ah, uh, yes. I know rent is high. Yeah, because that guy with the beard. Yeah, he told, he told me. <laughs> I voted for him and nothing. Nothing. <laughs> rent is high, guy. I'm just too damn high guy. Oh, I miss that dude. That actually had a platform at least. Yeah. Where is he now? Because now would be a great time to come back and go. I, now it's even way more too damn high. What did I tell you about it being It's even more way too damn high guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, He's the only politician who predicted the future correctly. Yeah. The rent is too damn high. It's interesting you're right about that. It's weird that he thought that was a whole platform, but that's fine. Yeah. I mean, you get pretty close now in this town anyway. Oh, yeah. Well, it's an actual platform, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely true for just about everyone. Here's a question for you politically, and then let's talk about Billy Joel. But let's... <laughs> Who? Oh, yeah. right. Right. If, if a libertarian ever became president... How horrible would it be for that libertarian? Also for us, but... Awful for us, but fun to watch that libertarian. Because they would fairly quickly have to quit being a libertarian. Yeah. I think that about like... They would immediately be asked to perform governmental functions. Yeah. They 
something like that. And then they maybe they get to try one of their goofy ideas. But what are they? I don't even know what their goofy ideas are, except that they want to be left alone to smoke weed. Yeah. They're so the idea would be they'd want to get rid of all social programs. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bootstraps. Yeah. But if you got rid of all social programs, you would run into the problem that those social programs were created because of. Right. And then you also don't want uh, police. Yeah. So, yeah, immediate total anarchy and murder. Yeah, it just it can't work. And I think they know that. Oh, yeah. They don't want power. It's a they don't want to pay taxes, I guess. It's a grift. It is a grift, yes. It's like, what's his name? Is it Rand Paul? Is that the okay. dude? Yeah, that's the dude. Because he was the dude who, like, anytime there's a natural disaster, let's say in New York or California or wherever, he always yeah. votes against sending them help. Right. No funding for natural disasters. And then something happens in Kentucky, and he's like, oh, hey, could we have money for our natural disaster? And we all say yes, because we're nice, but... I don't know how much longer we can be nice. No, I don't either. I really don't. Because, fuck you, god damn it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Welcome to Fuck Rand Paul. Yeah. that Man, that would be a popular podcast. Analyze Rand Paul's. So you picked... Billy Joel's Temptation. I did. And guess what happened? You've got to listen to it. No, totally listen to it. Um, The same thing that always happens, which is, I don't remember this song. And then I listen to it. I'm like, this is so pretty. What a pretty, nice song. Yeah, it is. um, Lovely melody. It's stripped down, right? There's not a lot. There's not not a lot. It It does feel like two-thirds of a song there's no bridge yeah there's no, it doesn't change anywhere but it's just piano which is nice very nice there's no is there's a little saxophone isn't there i feel like there was it was i listened to it a couple of days ago i can't recall yeah yeah the thing i thought about it musically was just it sounded like a perfectly reasonable Billy Joel song. It just wasn't anything, but that's fine. And they don't have to be. Yeah. Yeah. It reminded me of a song you'd hear on a CD. If your friend had a band and your friend's band was okay. <laughs> okay. And then you were like, Hey, I'm going to play this for you. Cause you, cause now you're enamored by the fact that your friend can do something. And then you play it for somebody who doesn't know your friend, and they go, eh. Yeah. Go, oh, maybe it's not as good as they thought. Because that happens every time I play any music for anyone <laughs> <laughs> that I like, there's this and, dude. Isn't it cool how they did the thing with the saxophone? And they're like, eh. <laughs> and then they say a much cooler band that they like. And I'm like, oh, I can't. Li- that's too hard to listen to for me. Yeah, that's a little challenging. Yeah, do Sonic Youth. It's too hard. There's a friend of mine named Kevin Ray had an album called, I think it was called Big Trash Day. And he has this song on there called Big Trash Day. And it's a great song as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. It's uh, what it's about is, is it's on Big Trash Day. Everybody gets a good look at the stuff you saved in the basement all these years. And it's about carting out your emotional baggage. Right. It's pretty well written. I have never succeeded in playing it for someone and having them go, yeah, I want a copy of that. <laughs> yep. I have the, when I worked at uh, Louise's on Larchmont, two of the other guys who worked there who were delivery guys were in a band called Winds and Reed. It's a very bad name. Yeah. Um, and so we would go, you know, all us waiters and would go see them twice a year. I think they played at, uh, Taik's, uh, French restaurant. 
in uh, down close to downtown. Okay. And they jammed. They were so good, and the guy was such a great lead vocalist with a like a crazy raspy voice, and they had their amazing guitarist. And I bought multiple <laughs> albums from their little merch table, and every time I play it for someone, they're just like, "What is this?" <laughs> And Sublime make a bad album on purpose? <laughs> God damn it. What's wrong with me? <laughs> Why? I mean, I'm sitting here doing a Billy Joel podcast. So uh, maybe don't go to me for your high end tastes. Yeah, but, but it was the same thing, by the way. I'm sure they were good, but also you knew them. Yeah. And it tricks you. It's the same guy who uh, steals pizza. <laughs> <laughs> also jams out is he famous now is he in a different band i think he's in the same band uh, and i think they're still doing their twice a month but yeah they never they even they do sound dated i will say that to me they sound like a um it's they sound it doesn't matter what they sound like they sound like uh the the uh Red Hot Chili Peppers, but like mild peppers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they edge, but it does have the same like funk. So they sound they sound like the bell peppers. <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> yeah, so the the briefly refrigerated bell peppers. That's right, and yeah. they're mostly the green ones. What's wrong with that? Yeah. Anyway. You hear some, hey, you want to hear some bell pepper trivia? Yes. Here's some bell pepper trivia. Red, green, yellow, orange. All those bell peppers? Yeah. They're the same pepper. What? Yeah. That blew my mind when I found that out. Same species. So they, they're they just picked at a different time. What? Yes. And that is why, if I'm remembering correctly, the red might be the yellow it doesn't matter but one of them is more expensive than the other and it's all about timing about getting it that's why sometimes you'll see in the yellow bell peppers a yellow bell pepper that's a little red oh because it was grabbed and then it you know once they harvest it they still mature a little bit oh sure yeah. so they're the same damn pepper. <laughs> I feel like that that's one of the things that I once knew. Yeah. And forgot about because you go to the grocery store and you see them in front of you, you're like, these are different. These are clearly different. Part of your brain is saying, like, well, it's not the same, obviously. They're yeah. in different kids. They're different colors. They're different prices, you just noted. Yep. How could it be? And that yet. And, yet. And, and they have a different flavor profile, too. Huh. So you'd think they're not the same, but they they taste a little different. That I hadn't noticed. Like the green, not nearly as good. Just isn't. Is the yellow where it's at? Yellow and the red one are really good. All right. And I think it's because the green one is the youngest, so it hasn't had time to mature and get more flavor. So it just kind of tastes bitter. Tracking, tracking. Yeah. Yeah. That's why people tune into the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All you right. got what you wanted, you pigs. Yeah, you filthy animal. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still thrown by this, like, we're going to drop a video. And they're yeah. giving, and they're saying, uh, that the fact that they've got slight tangent, and I know you're not used to that from this show, but just. <laughs> Stay with I, me. That they're going, hey, we're almost ready to show you this disgusting video of a person being murdered the yeah. same way that they'll, the new trailer for Ant-Man is coming out. It's yeah. that vibe, the way they're doing it. They, uh, the, having it like an hour where you're going to drop it and choosing like 7 p.m. on a Friday night. Yeah. You're asking for it. 
And yeah. I think they are asking for it. I don't think anyone's going to actually riot because of it. I really don't because, I mean, okay. you never know, but clearly the cops did a bad thing, but the cops are currently in jail. Yeah. As it has been well noted, and it's worth noting that, of course, the black cops got arrested immediately, not later. <laughs> right. Which, yeah. Which is a weird thing to note because you're like, yes, this is how it is supposed to happen, but this is not why it's supposed to happen exactly. Yeah. Why this he wants to try to for Wolf Blitzer to handle. Yeah. Well, I had this conversation with my friend Amore the other day about, like, of course, murderers should be in jail. But if the system is only, uh, if the system is consistently putting murderers of a particular color in jail and another kind of murderer doesn't go to jail, then no, that's not justice. Right. And the solution you would hope isn't release everybody from jail, but... No. But that solution is better than not changing. Hmm. That's debatable. Because at least you have some murderers in jail. Yeah, but you don't have justice. Well, if your goal is have. real justice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess you. it is debatable because you'd go, yeah, but I can still go to the grocery store and feel safe buying expensive eggs. But, yeah. True. Yeah. Would the eggs get cheaper if you let everybody out? Maybe they would. Yeah, that's right. I don't know. You'd have more demand. Yeah, true. So Okay, so maybe it's a good thing. The same supply, so I guess prices would go up. Well, one thing they say about murderers is they love eggs. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> they're murderers. They're just like us. They're murderers. They're just like They yeah. are just yeah. slightly different on a different day. Yeah. Oh, what we were watching a show last night and and we heard this um what we think might be the our favorite line ever from one of these crime thrillers and it was everyone's a murderer you just have to meet the right person that's really nicely done that's great yeah and that feels pretty true pretty valid yeah wow just hope you don't meet the right person, I guess. Yeah. Wow. Ooh. There's somebody out there for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> don't give up, man. Don't give up, man. You'll meet somebody. You're gonna, you know, you know, you'll be at a restaurant, you'll see each other across the room. You'll just know, and then you'll kill that person. <laughs> <laughs> uh and then you'll feel silly that you ever doubted yourself. <laughs> So the album, speaking of meeting someone and killing them, the name of the the uh, song is Temptation. Segway. Which is a very generic name. <laughs> it is. Um, and it's not like she's a temptation. Uh, it's very, yeah. I wonder if... Uh, It has anything to do with the temptations? Yeah, I it sound like them. I don't think. No, it's probably just maybe subconsciously, right? But I accidentally read what the song is written about. Oh, okay. Did you? No, because I think. Wait, what happened? Oh, Sue says I shouldn't say anything till the end, and she's my producer. She's valid point and that's what we pay her for so true we want to keep eyeballs yeah all right so now you no. you have a hint well not a hint you know what it's written about yeah and so by the way act like i don't and this is why we don't do that by the way because now now um how you might have thought about it will be different but that's yeah. interesting anyway yeah all right. Well, why don't I start and, it, and you can roll your eyes at me when I'm like not even close. <laughs> uh. All right. Here we go. Uh, it's time for me to be on my way. I know. 
I've got business to conduct and I've got places to go. But I can't help looking at her sleeping instead. Another morning, I'll have trouble climbing out of this bed because she's such a temptation, it's driving me crazy. Well, I feel like it's about a lady, but I'll tell you, the fact that I know you looked into it makes me go, oh, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's Is not. It enhancing your experience or ruining it? Uh, it's just a different experience. Okay. It's a lateral move. Yeah, because now I'm like, ooh, what if it's just he has a nice golden retriever? <laughs> <laughs> and the golden retriever is sleeping there and he's like oh maybe just sleep in bed all day and pet the dog and not deal with stuff i mean uh, maybe emotionally very similar yeah yeah we all there's always a something that is a temptation whether it's uh your cozy couch and the tv yeah boxy lady golden retriever not a chihuahua Although I do have a sweet chihuahua, she's very cuddly. Oh, see, if I had a chihuahua, I'd be like, all right, I'm going to work. <laughs> <laughs> but God bless. Yeah, she does this thing. I'll show you what she does, and this is why she's a bit of a temptation. I'll be petting her a little bit, and I'll want to get up, and then she'll go. And show me her belly, and I'm like, okay, okay. It's very cute. Yeah. <laughs> what is her name? It is Tinkerbell. Fantastic. When we got the dog, Mary Jo was a little mad. The way you're mad about something that's not important. She's like a little mad that Paris Hilton had a dog named Tinkerbell because she <laughs> always wanted to name her Chihuahua Tinkerbell if she got a Chihuahua. But then Mary Jo was like, I don't care. I'm naming her Tinkerbell. I was like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> and nobody better say nothing. Yeah, so far nobody ever does. So fantastic. I don't think people care that much. I feel like this is a win for Mary Jo. And also, oh, here's the other thing Mary Jo can sing. Ah, uh, yeah, that's true. Paris Hilton, not so Very much. much not. That album was an album I would have been tempted to buy in another era because for a while I liked every now and then buy the worst album and I found it funny to listen to them sometimes. Yeah. Hulk Hogan's album is great. Oh. But I don't think Paris Hilton's would be bad enough. Here's what's stupid about me. I bought uh, Bruce Willis's album, and then I actually liked it. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is really good. Yeah. Exactly my kind of shit. And then I try to get people to listen to it. And they, don't, they don't like it. No. They don't. It's good. And it, he made a couple, right? I, I only had one. There's probably, yeah. I mean, the first one he had was called The Return of Bruno. Okay. So a problem. So, yeah, there's no Bruno. So maybe that's what it is. Maybe he, man, he did that Leonard Six thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because oh. he's such a temptation. It's driving me crazy. And it's my fascination that's making me act this way. And I know what all of my friends say. They're afraid that I'm losing my touch. But she's such a temptation. Well, it feels like it's about a lady so far. It's very funny to me that um, from uh, the Long Island Jamoke angle that he's worried about what all his friends will say. Yeah. And who says that about a lady? Yeah, yeah, you're losing your touch. You stayed home with a beautiful lady, huh? Yeah. I don't know, Bill. <laughs> what an idiot. Not as gay as you used to be. <laughs> you're losing it. <laughs> you should come out and get drunk with us instead of being at home with someone you like. Yeah. Um, Sue pointed out, also going back to the beginning, that it's very funny how often in his songs he has a job to go to. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Yeah, get up and go to my job. <laughs> Didn't he? He barely went to school. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, oh, I got to get up early and have coffee and go to my briefcase job. <laughs> that's right. And Didn't do all my business. 
like a young musician idea of what everybody else is doing all day. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, watching Bewitched, he was like, oh, that's the kind of job. Like, Darren, I got a job like Darren's. <laughs> right. Yeah, you go out that front door and then nobody knows what happens. And then later you come back and you're tired. That's right. And there's there's like one room, one scene where they're in a room saying, Darren, you got to buckle down and do business. Uh, where are my charts? But so far, I think it's about a lady. They're afraid that I'm losing my touch, but it is weird, though, because why is this a problem? Yeah. Because you know, when you dated a hot lady, you didn't care what your friend, you lose touch with your friends for a while. They get mad at you. Yeah. But they don't think you're losing your touch. No, it's fact, fact. Hey, we're virgins. Why aren't you? <laughs> and what is she be with a lady? <laughs> yeah. Is this an, so is it a young relationship where every morning, because people are insecure, they're like, should we have sex now? Is it that thing? I think so. It's certainly very new. Yeah. His life has changed drastically. Yeah. Um, and that's all I'll say. I look so tired because I don't get much sleep. I got too many commitments that are too hard to keep. And I try to be rational and I try to be wise, but it all gets blown to pieces when I look in her eyes. Because she's such a temptation. And nothing can save me. But I might find salvation if I can tear myself away. Because I know what all my friends say. There's a danger in wanting too much. But she's such a temptation. Hmm. He's all over the place. Yeah. And his friends are weird. <laughs> and he's getting weird trying yeah. to play with his friends um it's very weird to say nothing can save me but i might find salvation if i can tear myself away yeah it sounds like you really like this golden retriever <laughs> yeah and who, what do you need to be saved from it sounds like you got it going on yeah everything seems fine and why do you need to tear yourself away now I will say if, if this is a if this is that early relationship where everyone is proving a point with the sex, then I can see that that can be a, an irritation. I remember years ago when Mary Jo and I were in our dating phase, um, early on, every now and then she'd make me late for work. Oh yeah, and it was mainly, That's, huh? It, is that the test of loyalty? To like. How much do you want me? Because we can do it right now. And my answer is always, well, anytime it's available, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. But eventually, like, that's not the now. Now is like, well, you got to get ready for it. So go to work. Like, all right. God damn it. You'll be here, right? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to work. Yeah. Got to go to the business factory. <laughs> Oh, no, yeah, yeah, those businesses aren't going to make themselves. <laughs> uh, I do all oh, the business factory. That's a pretty good. That would be a good business. That would be a good business in a cartoon, right? Yeah. Uh, and the Animaniacs. And the Animaniacs would be really. Yeah, that's the right cartoon. I was like, is it a Futurama? No, it's not a Futurama. Yeah, the Animaniacs, they go to the business factory. So the business factory completely naked except for a tie. Yep. <laughs> Good luck. Ah, uh, man, now see, now I can't wait to find out. I, you know what? You probably know that it's about Elle McPherson or something. Something. Uh, I should be leaving, but I can't cut it loose. Oh, now it's about a circumcision. That's what it's about. <laughs> yeah. Such a temptation to keep my foreskin. Yeah. I'm, you never know when you're going to need it. You can put change in it. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. That noise was great. 
I have my reasons for resistance, but I have no excuse. And I lose my composure. I could use some restraint. I never claimed to be a hero, and I never said I was a saint. Well, listen, nobody else also said that about you. Don't worry. Yes. Nobody ever said, you know, the thing about Billy Joel, he's a hero. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I think he's more of a saint. Well, he never said he was a saint. <laughs> She's you know, such a ten a of, Sorry, go ahead. No, no, yeah, go ahead. You for what? What was? I that? was just going to say. I'm sure there are a lot of lady, like older ladies on Long Island, who say he's a saint. <laughs> That's probably true. A paint by numbers, Billy Joel by the front entrance. Yeah. <laughs> She's such a temptation and it's driving me crazy. And that's my fascination that's making me act this way. By the way, he's never responsible for how he acts in almost any song. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and it goes out of his way to say, yeah, uh, I did a thing, but here's a reason. And it's really uh, your fault. It's really your fault. For making me act this way. Now I'm on now. You're clearly looking at lyrics on a different place. I'm always at billyjoel.com because I'm like, that must be the best place for it. You're very but, smart. But maybe not, because this next lyric is better watch out, you're losing your touch ampersand. <laughs> yeah. That can't I be don't have, I don't have the ampersand. It <laughs> can't be the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first draft, I think. He was still learning typing. That's <laughs> so funny. I'm like, well, and it doesn't it make sense that of all musicians that this would be true of, maybe the least accurate will turn out to be BillyJoel.com. <laughs> I mean, that's perfect. <laughs> right? She's sure. such a temptation and it's driving me crazy. Driving me crazy, let's just say, by the way, one of the more cliche lyrics a person can put into a song. Yeah. There, I mean, it's been the title of multiple songs. Yeah. Pretty fried by now. And it's my fascinations that making me act this way, I can hear all my friends say, better work out, you're losing your touch, ampersand. <laughs> Maybe that's his nickname. <laughs> it could be. He edits the school newspaper. Well, that's right. Yeah, there, here comes Ampersand. Yeah. Again. Uh the by the way, Karen Ellery in the comments. M &Ms to keep together. Huh? You have some MMs to keep together. <laughs> uh, okay. Karen Ellery in the comments section at BillyJoelCon.com says the quintessential expression of longing. Love this song, Love Capitals. <laughs> she said that three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> no follow-ups. No, she was like, I, I've said my piece. I would like it if she came back 18 months later and I found a more quintessential one. <laughs> Disregard. Vis-a-vis, <laughs> -vis. yeah, oh, that's great. <laughs> There's, is there any more lyrics to this? Not really, huh? I have. Yes, she is. She's such a temptation. Yes, she is. Oh, yes, she is. She's such a temptation. So, no, there are no more lyrics. Now, you read about this song. I think it's about a lady, right? In a manner of speaking. Now, I think we're there now. I can tell you. It's apparently written about his uh, little baby daughter. Oh. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> oh i was hoping you would cut the feed right there <laughs> no trivia for you tonight yeah wow i yeah, mean it's really borderline right so he's doing it on purpose right because he's thinking yes. of it as a trick yes i think so i think he's like can't wait for somebody to come up to him and say like i heard that great song you want you wrote about uh wanting to be with a lady yeah and he could go guess what asshole that was about my baby yeah <laughs> so i was close with golden retriever then because it's the same idea yeah. 
Yeah. It's just now I'm bothered by not knowing it. See, because it felt like so much that this was about morning wood. Yeah. That's me. Is that a better song? Morning wood. <laughs> Wasn't that the Beatles, right? That's right. <laughs> well, Norwegian wood is kind of about morning wood, though, isn't it? Because it's True. cheating with a lady and he falls asleep in the bathtub. I like right. that line. But he doesn't actually do anything with her. Does he? If I understand correctly, here's the trivia that I heard about that song, and you can verify as a super fan. Uh, that the original title was Knowing She Would. Oh my God, I've never heard that. So it's a song about how great it is to know that a lady would bone you if you wanted to. Ah. Full stop. Yeah. And, and the Norwegian you wood thing. Huh? That it's sexual, you can't do that. Yeah. And like, All right, I'll make it nonsense. Yeah. So he, uh, yeah, because the Norwegian wood I know had to, the Norwegian wood specifically had to do with something posh and fancy in people's furnishing that was, oh, it's made from Norwegian wood. Sure. I knew that part. And uh, and I, I get the like, I always thought he, he's close to having sex with this lady, but he's not going to. Yeah. And he feels bad. So he's going to sleep in a bathtub because he's going to be just away. Yeah. So what happens in the song? He like gets too drunk or something. Um, I once had a girl, or should I say she once had me? We can't afford this, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're gonna bankrupt our podcast. That's right. She showed me her room isn't in good Norwegian wood. Yeah. He asked me to stay and told me to sit anywhere when I looked around and I noticed there wasn't a chair. Oh, because you wanted okay. I sat under wine drinking her I sat on her bed. Biding my time, drinking her wine. We talked until two, and then she said, it's time for bed. Yeah, that's right. So he probably did get loaded, too. It was a lot of wine. Yeah. So probably what happened. All right. Yeah, John did a weird thing, because he would write songs that were absolute nonsense, and then he would also write, this is just what happened. <laughs> right, right. And it didn't seem to be too many in-betweens. Whereas Paul and my, I always thought John was a better songwriter. And as I get older, I'm like, nah, I'm pretty sure I'm wrong. I think it's Paul. Huh. I think they were just a perfect unit. Yeah. Like uh, Paul by himself is too uh, melodramatic. Um, a hokey. Yeah. John by himself is, uh, you get the White Album. <laughs> so anyway yeah this is alex and jim analyze john lennon lyrics analyze anything and everything and, and everything baby don't particularly have a direction <laughs> alex and jim don't see each other as much as they'd like to so they yeah, get that, yeah. silly yeah oh that's nice that's nice right do you like this song I thought it was a very pretty melody. I yeah. would, and I kind of like the way he sang in some places. So I was like, oh, he's doing that thing where he's like, oh, I'm black, you guys, but not really. <laughs> right. Not too hard. Right. Um, but yeah, it's like I said, it's like two thirds of a song. Yeah. It's like a cool bridge or some interesting instrumentation or something. It reminds me of what is the song uh, that is very much about his child uh, is, that, the lullaby one yeah the lullaby one good night really. my good night my angel turn to that one that's the one where he, he comes home from the business factory right put the, the baby down and it's it's a, like that it's like okay this is fine it's not special in any way yeah Hey, you know what? Now, so now I'm looking at the lyrics. Now that I know it's about his daughter. Yeah. What is wrong with your friends? Yeah. Why are your friends such idiots? Because <laughs> they don't spend any time with their children until they're old enough to play a fucking t-ball or something. Right. 
I'm like, I'm a baby. You raise it, Gloria. I'll be back when he's seven. Yeah, that's literally his friends are like, why are you spending so much time with that goddamn kid? <laughs> with your newborn baby daughter, you idiot. How is she going to develop a personality? She's got to have <laughs> resentments. <laughs> what good will she be to a man if she doesn't have abandonment issues? <laughs> uh, it's like she's barely from Long Island. <laughs> Yeah, she's probably going to grow up thinking you love her. You can't have that. And then what? Yeah, and then what? Oh, and now you got a golden retriever? Uh, we're never going to see you, man. <laughs> Between the Goldie and your kid. Oh, my God. <laughs> Goldies are great, by the way. Have you ever the big dogs? Oh. Retrievers are so oh. nice. Sweethearts. The other one I like, and but I, I understand they're too much work, is the Huskies. Oh, yeah. They make weird sounds. Yeah, right? they talk. They just chat. Uh, yeah. I think that would drive me up a wall. Yeah. And they're irritated at you for not understanding because you'll see huskies will just be telling you something. <laughs> yeah. And that's when they go for the gun. That's right. And the next thing you know, you got shot by a husky. Damn it. If What breed would you want to be shot by? Because oh, it's going to happen. Yes, that like, was... how great would it be to get shot by like a little teacup poodle in a purse? Oh yeah, <laughs> just it... the guy coming out of the purse. Yep, <laughs> pretty great. And I would love it if it was in a grocery store that I noticed a lady had it because you know when you're in the grocery store and you see a lady has a dog in a purse. Sure. And it, and you don't. I don't mind. I know some people do, but I'm like, well, she's not putting it in the cart. It's in the purse. It's fine. Yeah, and yeah. It's, it's a nice surprise. The little head peeps out. Yeah. And then I'm just going, oh, look at the little. Oh, my God. And I'm just very surprised. <laughs> I think I would like uh, maybe like a dachshund would be cute. That would be nice. Yeah. But I would want it would have to be a dog like sitting on the ground or in the park or something, because I would like to the last thing I see to be the recoil just shooting the dog across the grass. <laughs> <laughs> a, a little three pound dachshund and a three fifty seven, <laughs> and it'd be like ha 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 die. And you hear his, you hear the dog owner say as you're as you're passing away. I was like, oh, he, he even adjusted for the wind. <laughs> it's good. It's a good dog. It's a good, good, boy. good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Who killed that man? You did. You did. You killed. Him. Yeah, you just killed yeah. that man. You just killed him. <laughs> um, and you know, it's hard to say whether or not it's illegal because. The sign says you got to keep the dog on a leash. You don't say nothing about gun. Yeah. You know, dog is on a leash. And they don't, the insurance company doesn't have to tell you if the dog takes out a policy on you. Yeah. So there's no way to protect yourself. So a little wiener dog is what you're thinking of Dawson. That's that would yeah. be pretty cute. Like a long haired dachshund. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty damn cute. Yeah, that's the way to go. So we cleared we cleared the deck on this album. By the way, this album is done. Hell yeah! And uh, I, uh, you know, only eight I, tracks? huh? It only have eight tracks. Yeah, I think so. It's not a. Mm. And it's a uh, fine. <laughs> it's a fine. Yeah, I didn't. I did not necessarily love it, but it it um. I only listened to it once getting ready for the show. Maybe I should listen to it again. Now that I know that it's about a kid. Yeah. Yeah. I actually I mean, might... There are a couple of lines that are very appropriate. It all gets blown to pieces when I look in her eyes. I'm like, oh, okay, that's very sweet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, friend, the friends are weird. <laughs> yeah. Friends are being dicks about me and my kid. Look at that. Oh, my God. It's a it's a Joker on the phone. Yeah. That sure. Huh? It's Joker, yeah. Yep. Okay. Making a call. 
Yep. That's possibly pretty easy, possibly not. I think it is pretty easy because it's, I'll say it's the first line in a song. Oh. Um, mm. Yeah. Joker, Joker's calling me all the time. Yeah. yeah. Or are you calling him? Got a call from an old friend we used to be real close. No. Um, <laughs> But um, or um, am I calling him for you? <laughs> call, call me a joker. That's right. Uh, oh, uh. <laughs> why can't I? I can't grab it. Uh, call me a joker. <laughs> right at this moment, I'm totally cool. What what is that song? Me, 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 me. <laughs> That's kind of the chorus a little bit. <laughs> I can't think of the name of the song. You gotta tell me, man. Well, where do you go? Me, I go to the business factory. That's true. That's true. <laughs> but where else do you go to? Oh, I, I I go to work. I go to the park. Yeah, and then uh, when you're really ramped, revved up, where do you go? Oh, well, it's therapy. Sure. Um, or if you don't go to therapy, oh, I go to the gym. Uh, or extremes. You go to extremes. I go to extremes. I hate that song so much. <laughs> Oh, I hate that song so much. You know I love Billy Joel. This yeah. is what happened to me. I went to karaoke years and years and years ago in Chicago. And somebody was picking a song for me. And they're like, what do you want me to write down? And I, drunk, said, any Billy Joel song, I'll fucking do it. And it was, I go to extremes. <laughs> and it's so hard to sing and I hate it. And the video thinks, oh, that's why I blocked it. I blocked it out. Yeah, call me a joker. So that's me calling him for you, I guess. <laughs> yeah, like summon me a joker. Yeah, I think that would be uh, the best Batman animated series Joker, by the way. That's the Mark Hamill Joker. You hear very good things about the Mark Hamill Joker. I've it's not, good. not fewer, but um, I hear nothing but uh, the best. And well, and, and the other thing is the gentleman and um, and God rest his soul, he recently passed away. But Kevin Conroy uh, is for some people their favorite Batman. Period. Like the animated live, they don't care. They're just like Kevin Conroy's voice acting, and it really is good. He's just uh, really. Uh, they're just something magical about his voice performance. Right. And when you see him and you're like, you could have, when he was a little younger, you could have cast him live action. Uh-huh. You never would have. Right. Because he's, he's very good looking, but he's not like incredibly good looking. He's just like a nice looking man. Sure. But his voice acting was just off. Is he also a Joker? Or he's a different character? Is he oh, Batman? He's, Bat he's Batman. Right. Kevin Conroy is a lot of people's favorite Batman. Ha. Huh. All right. I'll try that when I, next time I'm, some nerds are beating me up. Yeah. That if you're ever in the mood to binge something you wouldn't typically watch, highly recommend Batman the animated series and uh all of those particular versions of Batman are really good. Cool. Are you an animation guy? Uh not a ton. Not really, huh? Yeah, not for like uh like there, I know there's some animated Star Wars stuff that's supposed to be pretty great, and I'm, I'm not down for it. I could never I quite. Like I like animation that isn't necessary, <laughs> like, <laughs> like shows like Doctor Cats. I'm yeah, like, they just shot that. Yeah, there's yeah, that's true. For it to be animated, nobody's doing it. Nobody's like flying to the moon. Yeah, that's pretty funny. That Bob's Burgers is like that. Yeah. Bob's Burgers, uh, Great Outdoors, or Great North. What is it called? 
Yeah. Kind of forte one. But the Bob's Burgers every now and then does a thing that you're like, no, you couldn't do that. But I think they, I think all those animated shows get a lot of pressure. Yeah. Like, hey, why are we paying for animation? If hey, you know, somebody's going to turn into a bat. Let me ask you a question. We did moving out, right? Anthony's song. I thought we did. I was looking at it and I was like, have we done that? That's this week's viewer question. Yeah. So we're not going to... Um, like we did very early. Probably. I feel like we must have. So let me ask you a question. You can say no. Oh, uh, first, why don't you do your trivia? I have some trivia for you. Love it. Of the uh, Billy Joel classic standard studio albums. They all have uh, album covers. Mm-hmm. Um, how many do not feature an image of Billy Joel and which albums? <laughs> that was a very good Yoda. <laughs> that Glass Houses has him from behind, so it's not Glass Houses. Innocent Man is just his mug. No. Nope. Uh, River of Dreams is a picture of him, I guess, drawn by Christy Brinkley. Yep. Let's see. Uh, Songs in the Attic is not by Billy Joel. <laughs> <laughs> and there is a drawing of him. Yeah. Um, I'll get, and my hint is we just uh, we just cleared the decks on one of them. <laughs> Oh, yes, of course. We just did. Um, let me. Uh... <laughs> did you forget the name of this album? Yeah, what I is that? Now about, I go to extremes. Yeah, that is so weird. Hold on. Uh, the Bridge, The Bridge. Bridge. Oh, and there's that. No, because that one has a weird drawing of him that's just charcoal. Um, but it's still technically him, I think. Yeah. All right, the bridge and something else. I'm gonna see. And three others. Three others. Wow. Street Life Serenade. It's just uh, a street scene. Yeah. Nylon curtain. Nylon. Oh, son of a bitch. Okay. Well, listen, I fucking whiffed on this one. And Stormfront. And Stormfront. Okay. Just the uh, the Beaufort flag. I don't know if the flags are called Beaufort. I know the wheat scale is. You can call them that. <laughs> I have a fascination with the names of the various scales. The, oh. scale, the nautical wind speed scale, which is the Beaufort scale. There's the, the scale of uh, chili pepper hotness. Topical. Nice. Which, the, the Scoville scale. Scoville scale, yeah. And then there's the scale of mineral hardness. And what is that? The Mohs scale, M O H S. Oh, named after um, Dwight Fruits. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Husband or brother? I was never sure. I think his brother. I think maybe it's Moses' his brother. Yeah. Yeah. Who, what is the name? Um, we saw him. We saw Mose at the Emmys. Last year, and I can't remember his real name. Suddenly, that's he used funny. to run a weekend update. Oh, that's funny. He, uh, I, my understanding is at some point he hated when he had to play Moe's because he it was a hassle. Yeah, it looks like a hassle too. Yeah, even though it was funny, but it was a hassle. Yeah, my I favorite could. Moe's moment was when Dwight supposedly is starting a daycare center in the building. And they walk in and they turn on the lights and Moses is there with a paintbrush and Pam just goes, were, were you painting in the dark? <laughs> Great. He never quite answers. It's clearly he was just painting in the dark. Such a Harvard guy joke. <laughs> <laughs> Great, but also doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Too so, clever, but... so here's my question for you. Oh, yes. I can pick another Billy Joel song, which we should, which we'll do regardless. Traditionally, we have. 
Or do we do a spec? Because I, I mentioned this last week. Do we do a like a special, uh, we'll call it a bottle episode <laughs> <laughs> of, uh, I kind of want to talk about that song, Flowers. And I'll talk a little bit about Miley Cyrus. Would you be into do, doing that? Or would you rather I pick another Billy Joel song and just, or do you that, want to do a special episode? I'll do a special episode. All right. So I want to talk about the song Flowers by Miley Cyrus. And yeah. then I generally want to talk about Miley Cyrus. <laughs> okay. I like her. I think she seems like a nice person. I don't know how nice she is. I know, I, I like her also. I think she's a force. Yeah. In a lot of ways. Um, now, when you say you don't know how nice she is, do you mean I, I don't know? Like, no, I, I have no extra knowledge. Oh, okay. So you just mean it in yeah. that sense. Yeah. I, I She hosted SNL a couple of times when I was there. Um, everybody seemed very pleased about it. Yeah. I don't remember anyone saying like, oh, what a dick. Yeah. So, as far as I know, yes. Her uh, stand on SNL, by the way, was only okay. Her musical performances were great. The sketches were fine. Yeah, well, it goes that way a lot of the times. Yeah, that's what I mean. So she wasn't one of those. She wasn't like... One of those, yeah, one of those people where you go, oh, I can't believe how funny that person was. But they were. she was fine. Yeah. She did, uh, she had, of course, they did a Miley Cyrus show sketch with Vanessa Mayer, and it was great. Right. But also I mean, that same. we always go. Everyone at the show always goes by whether or not they were game, as to whether they were a good host or not. Yeah, as opposed to how the sketches went. <laughs> yeah. like, well, uh, and she was definitely game. So, ah, uh, that's a good way to judge it. That's probably the better way to judge it. Yeah, there there are certainly people who are not and are a pain in the ass and yeah. push back on everything. And who needs that? Yeah. And then I remember uh, hearing the story about what's his name from the Rolling Stones, Mick Jagger, being a bit of a prima donna. And I find that story pretty funny. Great. Yeah. Because uh, he's one of these guys. He's been famous for too long to be normal. Oh, for sure. And he, I, but I think he also finds it very funny. Oh, to, to be that way? Yeah. It's like that. I feel like I'm a dick, so what I'm going to do is be a performative dick. And then everyone will have a story they can tell. <laughs> <laughs> and that's fun fun for me and fun for them. That's really good. By the way, is this the first year Tom Hanks has won a Razzie? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He yeah. wasn't a double nominee. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, like I, don't, I don't think I support the Razzies. I no, think people are trying. Yeah. Why are you being? Mean? I like it when they go accept them. That's nice. I mean, yeah. that is the way to play it. Yeah. They also didn't they get in trouble this year because they nominated like some seven year old girl. Oh, did oh gee, many Christmas people were like Jesus. That's not nice. Like, oh, only eighteen and over from now on. <laughs> Can't do that. Yeah. You're the you're the kind of people who fucking destroyed that guy who played Anakin as a kid, whatever his name was, Jake Lloyd. Oh yeah. Oof. Yeah. I no. hope he turned out Wesley from the Star Treks. Who which one? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although he turned out fine. This is the the last name on the show. Wesley Crusher. Crusher. Right. Yeah. Because he was a the son of Beverly Crusher. And all he did was complain. Yeah, and he was precocious, and people don't like that in their Star Trek. <laughs> no, no, it didn't work out. I can see why you don't like it, too. Yeah. Yeah. There were a I lot can... more kids on TNG, though, I'll say. That ship had a ton of kids. <laughs> huh. Yeah, that's true. They just established so many kids, and then every time the show is nearly getting blown up or whatever you think... Well, maybe there shouldn't be any kids on this ship. Kids, kids should be on the home planet. Why are they? Why do they have a family here? That seems dumb. Yeah. Yeah. You don't deploy with your family in the military. Yeah. It's, they they're military, right? There, there. Uh, there's a series of videos I watch sometimes about Trek that analyzes 
how stuff supposedly works. Oh, great. Because it's very odd because they talked about multiple times, talked about not having money, like there's no more money. But then they have stuff like a person owns a vineyard. Right. And somebody has a restaurant. How does the restaurant work? Yeah. If you don't own it, why would you work there? Yeah. Why are you cooking? Why would you cook? It's like uh, when politicians say things like, I want everyone to be wealthy. And like, mm, you very much don't. Yeah. Is uh, I, I got a little money and I will not work at a restaurant now. Yeah. And if what everybody, if they, you have to make your own eggs. Yeah, what if they uh, give you like a discount on meals? Would you work there now? Yeah, well, uh, now you've got me interested. <laughs> What kind of food? The uh, hey, the hours will be terrible, and your clothes will always smell a little off. Oh, cool! Like that? You're getting somewhere. Will there be a manager who never waited tables? Yes, there will. I'm in. <laughs> and he will hit on the twenty-year-old. Yep, successfully. God damn it! 